incorporated in Hansard. I call the clerk. Business of the Senate number two, reference standing in the name of Senator Roberts, reference to Rural and Regional Affairs and Transport References Committee related to the Iron Boomerang project. Senator Roberts. I move the motion. Thank you, Senator Roberts. I seek to speak to it. Uh, Senator Roberts. Thank you. Madam Acting Deputy President, as a servant to the people of Queensland and Australia, Project Iron Boomerang is an exciting and visionary project that can make our country's north and make our whole country. Project Iron Boomerang's main elements are a 3,300 kilometre transcontinental railroad with heavy duty axle capacity connecting existing rail networks in the iron ore region of the Pilbara to the existing rail networks in central Queensland. On the way, linking with the existing Darwin to Adelaide rail line to improve freight movement nationally. The essence of this project is that iron ore will be transported from west to east and those carriages then backloaded with coal to transport coal to Western Australia, hence the boomerang name. Steel blast furnaces in steel parks at both ends in the east in the Bowen Basin of, of Queensland, in the west in the Pilbara of Western Australia will in turn turn the iron ore and coal into steel slabs for export from Port Hedland in Western Australia and from Abbott Point and the Port of Gladstone in Queensland. Fibre optic, water, power and potentially gas lines can be laid along the rail alignment for additional commercial benefit. Project Iron Boomerang will strengthen Australia's balance of payments, lift our gross domestic product and with that lift our whole economy restoring our national security, restoring opportunity. We have allowed too many industries to be closed and sent overseas. Too many jobs have been exported. It's time to turn that around. Project Iron Boomerang is not unique. The 1,440 kilometres Tarkula to Darwin Railway was completed only recently in five years at a cost of $1.2 billion across similar terrain, so we know we can do it. The total Adelaide to Darwin line is 2,975 kilometres. We can do this. Iron Boomerang is feasible and well within our grasp. At the very least, the project will create a freight and passenger line that will open up the top end and improve services to remote regions. The alignment will be used to lay a fibre optic cable and a power line. These services would ordinarily accompany a railway having this line's economic and security implications. Remote communities, often disadvantaged Aboriginal communities, will benefit enormously from access to high speed, reliable internet, reliable power, transport and permanent jobs. Imagine the transformation of inland northern Australia. There's a strong case for adding a water pipeline along the alignment to add potable water to the services that, I'm, that Project Iron Boomerang will offer remote communities. Lake Argyle in Western Australia is part of the Ord River, Ord River Irrigation Scheme. At 5,600 gigalitres, it is mainland Australia's largest dam. The Ord River Irrigation Network extends close to the start of Project Iron Boomerang. A connection could be made to bring potable water, which is town, stock and station water, to remote communities. For too many years, successive governments have offered remote communities nothing except platitudes and paternalism while housing and services get worse and worse. Project Iron Boomerang offers a chance to change that future, to bring prosperity to Aboriginal communities, Australian communities, Northern Australian communities. The private sector, anxious to access cost-effective, reliable transcontinental and intercontinental freight and internet services, will meet much of the cost. Telcos are now showing a lot of interest in the fibre optic cable. The steel parks at either end are a large part of why Australia should move this project forward. In 2020, the world's largest steel manufacturer, China, produced 1, 000, 1, billion, ton, 1 billion tons of steel—1,066 million, to be precise. By contrast, Australia's two largest manufacturers, Liberty and Bluescope, produced just 12.7 million tonnes between them. 
of China's production. Despite accounting for, and, and by the way, the Chinese get their iron ore and their coal raw materials from Australia. Despite accounting for less than 1 per cent of world production, the Australian steel industry employs 100,000 Australians and adds $29 billion to our gross domestic product. Australia should be a leading manufacturer of steel. We hold the world's third largest reserves of metallurgical black coal and the largest reserves of iron ore, high quality iron ore. Yet we mostly export the stuff. $145 billion of iron ore and $100 billion of coal creating jobs overseas instead of here in Australia. Underlying world steel demand is expected to remain at 2 per cent growth over the medium term. With the new developing region of India, Bangladesh and Pakistan taking up the slack from maturing Chinese, American and European markets. If exports of coal for power are cut in the name of climate change, which one nation strongly opposes, substituting the use of coal for power with the use of coal for domestic steel will provide continuity of employment for the coal industry. And even Adam Bant has at last woken up to the fact that we need coal for making steel, so it's okay to burn coal now. Something that should keep the unions and coal miners happy. Steel is critical to the new economy, being an essential component of wind turbines and electric vehicles, amongst many other uses. Another economic benefit is fly ash, which is a byproduct of steel manufacture when the power source is coal. Fly ash can replace 20 to 30 per cent of the cement in concrete. Project Iron Boomerang will result in the construction of new concrete plants to utilise the steel, steel parks byproducts. This will, provide more on, more, this will provide more employment and, of course, produce more concrete to secure the foundations of all those wind turbines that the Greens want to build and the damn walls that one nation wants to build. There are significant economic and environmental efficiencies from replacing the export of coal and iron ore with the export of steel slabs. Much higher value. Australia currently exports 950 million tonnes of iron ore, including 350 million tonnes of dirt, and 177 million tonnes of metallurgical coal for steel and 213 million tonnes of thermal coal for power generation, freeing the world's poor who haven't got electricity in some cases. This is shipped trucked and railed around the world. Then those transports return home empty. Project Iron Boomerang will eliminate that overhead from the price of steel and eliminate all the wasted energy in that supply chain. And that gives Australia an enormous competitive advantage in the steel sector. Australian steel slabs will be sent overseas as backloaded cargo for container ships currently leaving Australia empty. More advantage to all, all importers and exporters from our country. It's likely and this is one of many claims for the committee to test, that these new steel parks, parks will be able to produce quality Australian steel 15 per cent cheaper than Chinese steel. 15 per cent cheaper than the Chinese and far higher quality. It's safe to say the project, with the support industries that will grow around the steel parks, will produce an economic benefit in the hundreds of billions of dollars. Hundreds of billions. The world steel market is worth 1.3 trillion. There's no reason Australia can't dominate that market, and with this project it will. Around 40,000 new breadwinner jobs will be created directly and indirectly, double that, or possibly much more. Project Iron Boomerang was granted project of state significance in Queensland in 2006. Yet this appears to have lapsed, partly through the need to coordinate three states on the project. And this is where the federal government is much better suited to advance the project. One Nation are proposing a committee referral with a view to recommending for or against the listing of Project Iron Boomerang as an Infrastructure Australia high priority project. The next step will then be a full business case, and that has a price tag of $240 million. Government must fund this before private equity will have the confidence to put billions of their own money into it. And we have nobody but ourselves to blame for the difficulty this project has had getting capital to complete a detailed business case. It's no surprise private industry are in effect saying to the government, we don't trust you. Once the federal government provides surety, it's likely that private equity will fund the major project elements. The railroad itself is costed at $20 billion, the steel parks around $40 billion, and supporting infrastructure another $10 billion. 
increased government revenue of $25 billion annually. $25 billion annually is likely for each $100 billion of additional domestic economic activity. One Nation does have a concern that the funding model will result in a high degree of foreign ownership, and this is something the committee can discuss. While we recognise that steel, company, steel customers may want to secure steel supply through joint ventures, One Nation wants Australian control through ownership. The work done so far in a business case proves the need to get serious about Project Iron Boomerang. I ask you for your support for this motion. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. Thank you, Senator Roberts. Senator Stirl. Uh, Deputy President, thank you. I just want to uh, put a couple of minutes to support and thank Senator Roberts for bringing this to my attention. And I hadn't heard of Project uh, Iron Boomerang, but I sat down and got a briefing from Senator Roberts. And I remember it comes back to uh, when I was a kid growing up, and I remember in the great state of New South Wales, we used to do all this sort of stuff. We actually used to make our own steel. We used to have proud steel cities where there were communities, there was bonds, there was families before this fly in, fly out nonsense took over, before the farm was sold, if I can use that terminology as a farm. And it breaks my heart to think, with I'm watching my grandchildren grow up, how disgusted they should be with politicians before us who thought this was a good idea to, to contract out work we used to do, and we did it well. Especially when I pick up and I hear our conversations like what I've picked up in Senate inquiries on the, on the inland rail, where there's concerns of cheaper uh, 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 steel coming from China, nowhere near the Australian standard. And regardless of who's in politics or, or who's in government, I always still have a fear. Who are the ones who are supposed to be out there monitoring this stuff? Are they doing their job properly? And that's not a blue versus red conversation or a blue versus red blue, uh, uh, argument. I nearly said blue versus blue, but you know what I mean. So I want to support, and I know the, Australian, the, the Labor Party and, and Prime Minister Albanese and the Albanese government support you, Senator Roberts, for bringing this to us. I think it's a magnificent thing. And I also think this is what we should be doing. This is the big ticket items that, when I first came into the Senate, Lo and behold, I thought we would be discussing this stuff on a daily basis. <laughs> How tricked I got. But anyway, at least let's get back to it. The big stuff about building a better nation, as I said in my first speech, and leaving it better than what we found it. But I want to share a quick comment with the Senate. And I was in China and I met with Madame Fu Ying. And some may think who's Madame Fu Ying. Well, Madame Fu Ying is very highly regarded in the CCP. She was a, a China's um, uh, ambassador to Australia during the Howard regime. And I was joined by Senate, former Senators Gallagher and Dastiari, where Madam Fu Ying made it very clear to us how wonderful it is. Thank you, Australia, for sending us your coal. Thank you, Australia, for sending us your iron ore, because we turn it into steel and we make a, a heck of a lot more money selling it back to you, and we appreciate that. I want to support this, and we will support this, Senator Roberts. And I urge and I understand the opposition hopefully get in behind us too, because this is the stuff we need to do. And once the beauty of speaking after Senator Roberts, you've heard the whole guts and the crux of the matter. I can't pick an argument in there. There's, there's not a downside that I'd see. And the beauty of it is that I know when it comes to my committee, the Rural Regional Affairs and Transport Committee, a committee that's been predicated for all the years I've been here to put aside all the political bulldust and actually dig deep, go wide, go varied, listen to everyone who's got a thought and actually try and deliver in the best interests of our nation. Senator Roberts, I'll tip my hat to you. I look forward to joining you on the uh, tour and let's try and put these two great industries together, iron ore in my state of WA, coal in your state of Queensland. This makes too much sense. I'm starting to get a headache because it's sounding too easy. I might wake up in a minute and think I was only dreaming. Fully support you, Senator Roberts. The Albanese government will be backing you in on this one. Uh, thank you, Senator Stirl. The, the question is that the motion moved by Senator Roberts uh, be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Those against say no. The ayes have it. I call